Thermaltake Core P3 has been my case for the last two years, but it's finally time to make it stand out. I've officially upgraded my PC from the ground up using this case. Not only the components inside, but we added a little bit of extra flair too. We'll get to that in a minute though. First, let's talk about the power. If you've been around the channel before, you might have seen this video that I sold most of the components that had been using in this machine to a coworker's friend of mine. That was a fun build that left me with the bare bones of this case, this NVIDIA RTX 4060 Ti, which I've also made a few videos on, and then a couple of odds and ends like my hard drive so that I don't have to completely reinstall everything from scratch, which of course I did end up doing anyways, but that's besides the point. To power this computer, I picked up this massive bundle from Micro Center that included the Intel Core i9 12900K processor, the Asus Z790 motherboard with Wi-Fi, as well as 32 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws S5 DDR5 RAM. And yes, before you ask, this build was inspired by Powerline from a goofy movie. I was a bit worried about running an i9 off an air cooler, but honestly, this deep cool AG400 not only looks the part, but it keeps the processor nice and cool too, especially when I'm working in this open air PC. I've never seen the temps go over 75 degrees Celsius, and that's gaming, video editing, or even benchmarking. And to power it all, I grabbed this fully modular Corsair RM850 power supply. I'm definitely thinking about finding or making some sort of cover to go over it at some point, but until then, honestly, the white looks pretty nice. All of this together and my beloved gaming PC is back up and running, but it's missing something. I didn't 100% think through how big of a difference in looks there would be from changing out the AIO for this air cooler would make. But instead of a wall of RGB fans on the side of the case, I now had only emptiness. It was a little bit lopsided. I thought through a couple of different options. Obviously, the first idea was a custom water cooling loop. Not only do I really, really want to have the chance to be able to do something like that myself, but this case was honestly made for that kind of thing. Unfortunately, between pumps, tubes, blocks, the liquid, all costs a lot of money. Not to mention a lot of work, setup, maintenance, for most likely not any noticeable change in performance. Now the next option was to just buy another AIO to fill that void, but the same feelings kind of arose. At, at at least $100, $150, or probably more for a fancier one with minimal performance increase just didn't seem to make any sense. I finally landed on putting in a screen. Inspired by the plethora of height Y70 cases and other modders adding in extra screens to their case, this fully touch capable 10 inch screen edition fits perfect, at least on the front of the case and coming in at $69 on Amazon. Nice. This was the clear winner to try out first. It didn't come without its fair share of issues though, when we'll get to those in a second. But first, I wanted to make this thing my own. Now that I'm rebuilding and taking everything apart anyways, I decided to take it to the next level. Let's bring on the paint. So first, I sanded things down a bit so that the paint would stick. I wanted it to be a really dark purple, so I first coated it in black, then I put the purple on top to make sure that none of the white showed through. I splattered in a bit of the silver all over and then clear coated the whole thing. I also painted up a bunch of the accessories, the PCI bracket, the PSU bracket, the RAM covers, lots of thumb screws, all got the chrome treatment. 
Everything went perfect, putting the machine back together. It booted up and was looking awesome. But then this darn screen started causing me some problems. Once I finally figured out how to mount it, it was getting the cables to fit in the case. I didn't even think about how close it was going to be to the top of the case. So at first I ordered these right angle connectors, but that only solved the issue momentarily for at least the HDMI connector. The USB port worked fine. All right, so I ran into an issue uh, with the screen here. So attaching the screen, uh, the, it has this weird board built into it, right? This, this board here. The only way then to make that work was by taking this board, putting it through the open slots here, which the cable on that is, is very, very short. I can't even like get back here to, to show you like, how short those cables are. Like that's as far away from, from the screen as it's gonna get here. But then I ran into a problem and I had the, the HDMI port and the uh, power port up here that were too close. Uh, the HDMI and the USB-C and make them go to the side like this. But now we've got another issue. Uh, see how far that HDMI cable sticks out? That's supposed to sit up, up flush there. That's, that's not gonna work. And I think this is going to save me. This one cable here is gonna do what I want it to do. The good thing is the, the USB-C or the USB cable here can lay flat enough, so that'll be fine. So really the problem here is still just this uh, HDMI port. And I'm gonna try as hard as I can not to break this whole board. I just about did, I think, getting this in. But I, uh, so I've got this also 3M taped. So I have, oh, yep, have to get it off of there without breaking the tape. <laughs> All right, and I broke the cable. Hey! It's working! That's me, that's my screen. All right, shut that computer down. Okay, it is working. Let's get it all put back together.
we are definitely moving in the right direction with this build and I'm loving everything the way that it is already. This is my computer and it is really, really fun. Just the way that your tech should be. This PC is definitely fitting right in to my new pink and blue neon synthwave themed office. If you want to check out the video where I completely redid everything, reorganized and cleaned a ton, make sure you check out that video over here.